And joining us now is Thomas Ricks. He's author of the brand new bestseller, The Gamble. Uh, he's a Washington Post uh, reporter, also a senior fellow at the Center for New American Security. Tom, thanks very much for coming in. You're welcome. This is a really powerful book. Your last book uh, got you the Pulitzer Prize, among other things. Let's talk about the war in Iraq. We're not hearing a lot about it. There's assumption that things are going in the right direction, and it's all but over. You don't believe that, do you? Well, I think the message of my book, Fiasco, the last book, was that Iraq was in terrible shape, much worse than you thought. The message of this book, I think, is that Iraq is, is not as good a shape as people think. The war is not over. I think we'll be fighting there for a long time to come. You, you're suggesting it may only be half over. Yeah. And in fact, General Odierno, the American commander in Iraq, says at the end of the book that he would like to see 35,000 troops there in the year 2015, which would mean that Obama's war will be longer than Bush's war. In the end, is, is Iraq going to be a stable democracy, a close ally of the United States? Or is it going to be a close ally of its neighbor, Iran? It almost certainly is going to be closer to Tehran than to Washington. It's pr probably not going to be a democracy. It's probably not going to be that stable. The best case scenario is probably a strong man, somewhat like Saddam Hussein. Someone like Saddam Hussein? Somewhat like him, yeah. So what does that mean? Are we going to go back to the, the future, in effect? Is that what you're saying? Uh, it might mean that we'll have to have troops around to keep an eye on the, the Iraqi government that we create, yeah. But that's not the worst case scenario, that's the best. Worst case is the country breaks up, has a civil war, or it becomes a regional war. And, and that's realistic? Those are quite possible, actually. I think if you pulled U.S. troops out tomorrow morning, that's the, you'd, you'd see that begin to happen. Well, what happens if uh, the, the Obama timetable works? Uh, by the end of August 2010, there are only between 35 to 50,000 troops, and that by the end of 2011, there are zero troops, U.S. troops left. Uh, do you believe that's doable? I don't think it's going to happen. Um, and in fact, I don't think people understand what is meant by that. Obama is going to change the name of the mission. He's going to say it's a non-combat mission. But that doesn't end the war any more than hanging mission, mission accomplished ended the war. Uh, I was over at the White House last Friday after the speech that the president gave at Camp Lejeune. And I said to a military official, will American troops be fighting and dying in Iraq after August 2010? He said, yes, they will. In, in significant numbers, you think? Well, the numbers will get down. I think they'll get down not, maybe to 50,000 by sometime at the end of 2010. But I think we'll then find that the Iraqis say, you can't leave us now. You created the situation. You need to keep troops around here for some but time. There is an agreement between the U.S. government and the Iraqi government worked out in the final days of the Bush administration that by the end of 2011, there are no U.S. troops left in Iraq. I think that agreement was much more about getting Iraq through 2009 than it was about 2011. By 2011, you'll have a new Iraqi government in place, and they actually... I think the Americans assume they will invite us to stay longer. You write in the gamble, you write this, the events for which the Iraq war will be remembered probably have not yet happened. Explain what you mean. Well, there's actually a quote from Ambassador Ryan Crocker, who was our top diplomat there the last couple of years. Crocker said it to me twice. And so in my last interview with him, I said, look, that's going to be the last line in the book, if you still believe it. Absolutely, he said. We don't know how this thing ends. And how this thing ends over the next several years will determine how we remember it. If a new, tough version of Saddam Hussein takes office, we're going to think about this war very differently than if Iraq becomes a democracy. You, you think that this war, the decision to go to war in Iraq back in 2003, was a horrible blunder? I think it was the worst foreign policy decision in American history. Explain. Uh, it was the wrong war. It took our eyes off the ball. We should have been focused on al-Qaeda and Afghanistan. Uh, it has cost us a lot and has gotten us very little. The biggest winner in this war so far is Iran. And we have committed much more than we understand. Just because Americans got bored with this war doesn't mean it ends. We have a lot more that we're going to spend in blood, tears, and treasure in this war than I think any Americans really grasp right now. And you know a lot about another war that's going on as well, the war in Afghanistan right now. Only this week, uh, Congressman John Murtha said the situation in Afghanistan is so challenging, he estimated it could take 600,000 troops to uh, fully uh, end the violence in that country. Is he on, uh, is he on target there? Well, he also knows we don't have 6, 600,000 troops available. Uh, he's not on target, but there is a grain of truth in this. If you're going to pacify Afghanistan, though, it's going to have to come from Afghan troops, Afghan police. The purpose of having our troops there is partly to keep an eye on these people. Right now, it's not just the Taliban that's the enemy in Afghanistan. It's also Afghan police who shake down truck drivers five times in 100 miles. You can't run an economy like that. Is it winnable in Afghanistan? 
No, it's not winnable, but what you can do is try to, try to keep the lid on militarily until a political solution can emerge, but that's going to take a lot of time. The uh, book is entitled The Gamble, General David Petraeus and the American Military Adventure in Iraq 2006-2008. The author, Thomas Ricks. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Obama is going to change the name of the mission. He's going to say it's a non-combat mission. But that doesn't end the war any more than hanging mission accomplished ended the war.